Hey there, everybody. Mary from Ambition here. And today I've got a couple guests with me to help answer some questions that you guys have been bringing about remote sales in this crazy time. So I want to introduce them. I've got Brian Trouchold, our COO and co-founder here at Ambition. And then I've also got Brian Noss, who is the Director of Sales Enablement at Lessonly. Um, thank you guys both for coming back on. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. We are going to kick things off right away. Um, you know, Brian Noss in sales enablement. So I'd love to hear from you. We have several sales enablement clients um, in our own Ambition user Slack this morning asking some questions. And I'd, I'd just love to share back with them, you know, what is your focus from a sales enablement standpoint right now? Yeah, totally. I, I, as you can imagine, uh, uh, the, the focus has shifted quite a bit over the course of the, the past couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, the, the primary thing that we're trying to do right now is um, focus on how we give our reps the confidence to deal with, with the variety of situations that, that they are getting in. Um, so so our, our messaging is changing and, and not changing drastically, just trying to make sure we are conveying uh, to, to our customers and prospects that um, we, we want to convey as human a message as possible that, that we are, are here to help them and, and figure out like what makes sense for them, right? We, we, we are in certain situations that's allowing us to move things faster in certain situations where we're slowing things down but we're trying to deal with it in a, in a very uh, human way and, and and focused on that kind of confidence piece so when the reps get into those conversations uh, that they, they are prepared to, to um, help yeah and so when you are changing messaging or changing talk track or whatever you guys use how do you get that information to your reps like how are how do they receive the new information yeah, totally. Uh, so, so a variety of different ways. So uh, first and foremost, I, I, because this everything is happening in such a fluid um, motion right now, uh, we're we're leaning heavily on Slack. Um, so we we have a couple channels set up where, where we're just sharing stories back and forth, like what messaging is working, what's not, um, where are we seeing successes, things like that. Uh, and then once we start to see some trends, uh, we then take that and are putting it into uh, our own platform, uh, luckily. So um, we are, our lesson is a sales training platform that, that allows us to capture that information. And that's what we're creating as that source of truth uh, for our reps. So they know exactly where to go to, to, to get that information. That's awesome. And, and, you know, internally, Brian can maybe share a little bit about this, our, our Brian here. We're, we're working on a messaging document from marketing of like yeah. how we talk about this and, and, you know, what are some things that we're doing at Ambition to, you know, sort of do the same thing, help change our message for our reps? Yeah, well, I think, you know, what we're all dealing with right now is that like it, the, the pandemic, the change in the economy, everything that's happening, like it, under, it impacts different companies differently. And so, you know, we're having to be, I think, much more uh, focused on listening, on asking questions, on adapting to what the uh, customer prospect or opportunity is telling us. And so, you know, we're trying to, like Mary said, like centralize as much of that um, so that people are on the same page. Because just like like me, you know, our, our sales development reps and our, our account executives, like, they've never been through something as uh, dramatic and rapid as what's happening. So, you know, just like you said, Brian, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to educate them on, on what's working, but also have, you know, empathetic language and empathetic questions that they can then utilize because the interesting thing, and I'm sure this is, is happening for you guys is like, there's actually, I think a really strong through line of folks, now looking for solutions to help with their sales teams because their business is changing. And so we're trying to meet in the middle of like, you know, having the right message, making sure we're teaching people how we can help, but also not being too pushy as far as like, we're trying to, you know, push sales right now. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing we're seeing a lot of right along those lines is, as we know, like salespeople are inherently impatient, right? Uh, and, and one thing that we've noticed in the course of this, this really the kind of the past week and a half where uh, we went to full work from home uh, starting officially last Monday. So, so we're just, just over a week into it. And 
we're a pretty nimble business. We, we were, we were able to kind of get our uh, quote unquote sea legs pretty quickly. Um, but that's not the, the reality for every business. And like you said, every business is different. And some businesses uh, are, are still figuring out like, hey, how do I get a computer to my employees who are now working from home because they were working on desktops before or uh, they may not be set up at home. So I've talked to some companies who are shipping their employees desks so that they have some place to work. And be, because we were able to adapt pretty quickly as a business. Um, we, we're trying to, to make sure we, we set that reality for our reps and just constantly have conversations like, hey, j just because your prospect is ignoring you doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing, right? It, it, and shifting the, the, the focus and the time frame is sometimes just really important to have that perspective on not everyone is moving at the same pace as they deal with this with their business. I love that you just call that out, those conversations with your reps, the one-on-ones and, and what is that like for you all? How often do you have um, one-on-ones or coaching sessions or um, things like that with your team where you can have those conversations right now? Yeah, totally. I, I think right now the reality is all the time. Um, uh, I, but I, I think that there are a couple of different kind of formal uh, kind of coaching opportunities. Um, first and foremost, the the one-on-one -on -one that, that the manager is having uh, with their reps, uh, depending on, on the segment they're in, that, that's either weekly or biweekly. Uh, and those are the times where, where they're getting kind of deep into kind of the the one-to-one -one conversation and focusing on their, uh, their own personal development, how they are dealing with the situations, those things like that. Uh, we also have other opportunities where we're doing more group sharing and collaboration and, and group coaching. Uh, so every other week we, we have um, uh, a, we call it a, a practice session where we get together and uh, usually focus on, on one specific topic. We, we just had it this past Friday a few days ago and uh, the topic there was I, I, how do we uh, how do we share and collaborate on kind of what's working? So kind of pulling up from what those Slack conversations were happening uh, and really just kind of using group think to just like brainstorm a lot of things like, hey, I tried this and got this response. And, and another rep was like, oh, that's interesting. I, I tried this and got this response. And it was, oh, well, how about we try this next? And just using, using kind of the group to coach each other because what, we're all experiencing this in, in a little bit different way uh, and leveraging all the, those different experiences to kind of come up with kind of what, what the right next best step forward is at that particular time, which we know is probably going to change tomorrow. <laughs> I think that's yeah. amazing. Go ahead, Brian. So, no, I think, uh, I mean, I definitely think those are my, my assumption and maybe, maybe will be different on this one is like, we're increasing the speed of those touch points and those, um, you know, both like the group formal uh, coaching as well as like the, the one-on-ones. And I think that um, this is something I would advocate for a lot of folks, you know, maybe like, like you guys at Lesson Lane, like we were already kind of um, somewhat of a virtual team or a remote team where we had people, AEs in different markets. We have some sales development people who are fully remote. And so we had somewhat of a good cadence, but now it's everyone and we're increasing the speed of one-on-ones. Uh, I think we're doing, you know, continuous coaching, but also uh, more formal one-on-ones at least once a week with all the folks on the sales side. Um, and one thing I would advocate for is doing the, the health, the, the, you know, kind of like the mental check that you were mentioning, like, how are you yeah. doing? How are things going? But then also flipping it into, okay, well, let's look at some metrics that we can control. Like we can control um, things like how many calls you make or how many, um, you know, uh, opportunities you create or meetings you schedule. Those are like derivative of the activity. And so, we know right now that deals are going to push um, people that said, yeah, I want to buy in March are going to say, I need to see what happens for the next couple of weeks. Like we cannot control that. We should not control it. But the things that we do have control of um, how we target, how we prospect, you know, trying to really hone in on, on those and have some, you know, some ob objectiveness of, okay, like this person or this rep is doing a great job and she's really, you know, really still hustling uh, or really trying to develop even while, we may know that, you know, it might not convert to dollars right now, which is okay. Yeah, t totally. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And one thing that, that we've started to, to focus on is, again, a, every rep is different. A, every rep's pipeline, the, the current time is different depending on the, the different brands that they're working with and kind of 
where those individual businesses are. And so uh, what, what we're trying to leverage is uh, for those reps who, who may, we may be identifying like their, their quarter's going to be pretty slow. Can we, can we put extra emphasis on uh, their development, their skill development that we need to work on in this time so that when things start to pick back up again and they got, start getting those opportunities, that they're in a better place. So not just le uh, letting them uh, kind of sit on the vine and uh, dwell over maybe their, their quarter that, that may be a little slower. Like let's leverage this um, maybe it's a blessing of extra time that we can use in a different way that then is normal. Yeah, what, yeah, is so that, what is that framework like for you guys, you know, in it, maybe even pre this shift, like what was the framework for your skill coaching or performance? Yeah, coaching? yeah totally. So, so we, we follow a, and it's pretty new for us. Uh, we follow a coaching framework that, that really kind of consists of two primary parts. Uh, the first is what we just call performance coaching. And, and that's the normal stuff that, that you're thinking about. Like uh, we, we leverage chorus internally as our conversation intelligence. Uh, and so our, our managers uh, and my team are in there on a regular basis uh, going through and, and giving comments on, on calls of, Hey, great job here. Uh, here's an opportunity where, where you might improve this messaging here or, or, or consider this question next time. Um, we, we leverage their, uh, their scorecard feature uh, quite a bit as well, um, j just to kind of help us organize around what we are coaching on. Um, as a part of that framework that, that I was talking about from a performance standpoint, we, we really try to focus on uh, e each performance coaching opportunity. We, we try to focus on a, a single skill or, or one to two skills so, so that we're really focused on one or two things uh, and not just the, the general all the time. Uh, so, and and we, we leverage that, that coaching feature to, to help us do that. Um, so, so there's the, the performance standpoint. And then there's also the, the skill coaching that we focus on as well. Um, each quarter, every rep identifies a single skill within our skill matrix that they are going to work to improve that in particular quarter. Um, that's done in collaboration with, with enablement, their, their own uh, personal recognition and their manager. So once they de decide on that, um, they leverage our coaching plan to, to help them um, kind of figure out the, those different opportunities that they have to maybe it's learn more on, on how to um, improve that skill. Maybe it's practice opportunities. Um, and, and that could be anything from one-to-one -one practice with, with their manager or they, they might be leveraging some virtual practice. They might be uh, practicing with, with their, uh, with a peer or something like that. So we're really focused on those two areas, kind of the performance and the skill development. And do you tie either of those, any of those things back to metrics? Like are, is there a measurement component and, and what are some of the metrics that would show the coaching or, or skill um, coaching is working? Yeah, totally. So, so I, I mentioned briefly our skill matrix. So each of our, each segment of our business ha, has a set of skills that we've identified that it takes to be successful. And those are th everything from like having a good business acumen all the way down to uh, for like a commercial sales rep, can you effectively demo our product? So, so it kind of spans the, the whole range. Um, each one of those has a, a, a metric defined to it, a, a business metric defined to it and a performance metric. So the performance metric is, uh, can you, um, can you successfully do these things, right? That is based on a rubric. So, so we have a, a grading function that is built into that. And so anytime we're doing um, feedback from, from practice opportunities or we're doing any kind of certifications type things that that's where we're using that kind of performance uh, evaluation. Um, the other piece is a, an actual Salesforce metric for us. So things like um, uh, developing pipeline, we're looking at things like win rates. So uh, if, they, if they're working on developing their uh, negotiation skills, uh, we are likely they're going to look at both win rates and your discount rate as, uh, as a rep and look at those on the average of the team on the, how they want to improve those. Um, I, one thing, another thing I'll mention uh, is uh, that quarterly skill that, that each rep identifies, uh, they also identify the specific metric that 
they are going to track through the quarter. Uh, they measure that metric at the beginning of the quarter uh, with our guidance. Uh, they measure that at the beginning of the quarter and then set a goal for where they want that to be at the end of the quarter. And then they, they, we measure it again with them uh, to see what, what that improvement looks like. That's great. Can you share any of the ambition, um, the coaching and what we're focusing on right now, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that, um, Brian, I love that you said there is like, you know, tracking that through line of what we call attribution. And so like we have a, a notion in our product that actually um, does a similar thing where we say like, I want to focus my coaching on X, Y, and Z over a quarter, for example, 12 weeks. And I want to see how it affects, you know, this metric, this metric, this metric. And, you know, right now, I think uh, I, being really honest and transparent, like all of that stuff is kind of being shifted, right? It's all about, you know, how can we, um, you know, for Mark, our VP of sales, like I know the conversations he's having with uh, our reps are a lot more about controlling the controllables. Like, what can you do? Like, we can become a more trusted advisor to the opportunities we have. And we do that with, um, the cadence we speak to them, we do that with the type of assets. It's kind of amazing to see, you know, uh, not a not a huge ship, but the size ship that we are now, where everyone is shifting in one direction, and we're seeing these things pop up in Slack. Like, hey, I need content for, you know, managing remote sales reps. Hey, I need content on um, how you do better accountability or reporting right now. And so, you know, putting those stories out there, and then I th I've seen a lot of this with specifically Mark and as well as Chris, who's our SDR leader, you know, they are doing uh, daily, actually twice daily, morning and afternoon, uh, basically what you described, that, that kind of situational role play uh, uh -huh. or a walk through a specific case. And um, uh, one of the things that I really like is that we're, it's an interesting time to be, you know, drinking our own champagne or, or eating our own dog food, if you will. Like we're, you know, using things like 10 by 10, which is came up in our, our customer Slack earlier. Um, and that is like, I want to know that my young sales development reps who are at home, I want to know that they've made 10 calls by 10 a.m. and they're not playing Fortnite or they're not watching <laughs> Netflix or whatever else, you know, anything. Um, and similarly, like, you know, I'm a, a parent with young kids. I know you guys have kids at home right now. Uh, our days have shifted a lot. And so, you know, some of these folks, they don't care when the work gets done. They just want to know that like on a daily, weekly basis, folks are hitting a specific set of milestones or, or KPIs. And I think that's really interesting. Another thing that we're telling stories about with triggers is like, it doesn't have to be that, you know, someone needs to make a hundred calls by 5 p.m. or talk to 10 people by 5 p.m. But maybe you want to make sure they have you know, 25 customer conversations this week. Uh, we're going to give folks the ability to tell that story. And I think that's really key from a coaching standpoint of Mark and Chris, you know, really giving, giving our reps access to what they're looking at and saying like, this is the things that are keeping me up at night right now about you all. And, uh, you know, kind of personify the story for them so that they can go teach it out in the wild. Totally. I, I love that. And, and you mentioned kind of the, the check-ins at the, the beginning of the day and the end of the day. I, I think one of the things that uh, for the most part, every uh, individual team within Lastly is doing those kind of morning kind of stand up kick off the day. Uh, one of the inter interesting things that I think we're starting to see from that is the collaboration that is happening in those times, kind of what, what you're talking about. So, so it's, it, it takes us a little bit out of the, oh, I, I'm at home, I got this new schedule and uh, I, I have to get these activities done. Like that's a reality, right? Everybody knows that. But having these kind of quick check-ins is almost creating some, um, I don't want to say gamify it a little bit, but but I'm hearing some of the successes and I'm, I'm getting energy from my teammates who are telling me about what they did yesterday. And, and those happen normally in the office, but they're, they're happening more in little pockets as opposed to now it's kind of happening as a, as a full team. Uh, and I think we're starting to see some of the, the momentum of just from a team collaboration perspective uh, that it is just a little bit unique now in, in this environment that frankly we may take forward when all of this is uh, over and done. Oh yeah. So that's, that's so interesting you say that because we've, we've seen a bunch of folks um, who are making this transition 
everyone's making a transition in some way, but they're trying to figure out how do we get that, um, how do we get that energy? How do we create that, that energy and momentum you're describing when no one is around, when a lot of the day, uh, if you're on calls or you're doing stuff, you're not maybe like super deep in Slack or in email. So like folks are trying to figure out like, how do we, how, you know, do we drive it? And so we're still doing, you know, I think two call blitzes a week for, for some of our teams. I think we're doing um, a couple more collaborative, like goal targets. So like, can we go deliver yep. X, like this many new opportunities or this many meetings scheduled? Um, and like, that's hard because every day feels like a week right now. But uh, <laughs> I do think, you know, the, the, the challenge of folks trying to figure out how to create that momentum is really real. And, and that's a great example of having those stand-ups and like people riffing off each other. It's, I think it's really powerful. Absolutely. That is one thing that does keep coming up in, in our customer Slack is the stand-ups. And I'm surprised so many collectively, they're bookending the day. You know, a lot of teams used to do either or, but the bookending of the day with the morning and afternoon has been a, a common theme, which I think a lot of people, to your point, Brian, will take away and continue even after maybe things get back to some level of normal. Um, I did let our customers know that we were going to be talking with you and we had a couple questions submitted. So I want to ask on their behalf. And, and the first one is really around, I want you both to share, but what has response rate to cold dials and emails been like for your team? Has it been changing? Um, and what do you, what do you tell your reps? Yeah, I think for us, it, it's been uh, shifting, uh, not changing. So, so people are still picking up the phone, but but not everyone. It, it, it's not the same across all businesses. I think kind of uh, goes back to kind of what we talked about earlier. Some businesses uh, like ours have been able to make the transition quicker. And now for us, they're thinking about, okay, I'm working in a new environment. I, I need to make sure we are set up to, uh, I still have to train my people. And so leveraging a, a uh, an online training platform is going to be a necessity. So now that, that they've been able to make that transition that's on their mind, they are picking up the phone. They are engaging in emails. The flip side of that is still the same, though. Some people are still worried about getting their team's computers and desks, right? Eventually, they, they're going to get to the point where they're going to be need to think about it, and then they will start picking up the phone and answering the emails. So while I, our, our numbers are, are fluctuating, but I, I think just shifting to where we're seeing some, some of that engagement, even with our, our live opportunities that, that are, hey, it, it just depends on how quickly my business can react to this. Yeah, something interesting we've seen and, and a story that I, I really enjoyed is uh, two things. One, to high level answer your question, Mary, the, I think the answer rate or conversation rate has gone down slightly, um, but the positive outcome of calls is going up. And I think it's interesting, uh, one of our sales development reps put the story in, in our uh, Slack the other day of a conversation where he was like, the sales leader was just so happy that he had called because it was like a return to normalcy. And it was like, I get what you're doing. Like you're calling me, you're a sales development rep. Like you're just doing your job. And like, he was like, it was a weird call because this guy was just like generally happy to, to speak and like to have some, I guess like back to business aspect. And it was a good call. And I think that, you know, that goes back to Brian, what you were talking about at the beginning with coaching people to be, human and to, yeah. to be empathetic and to be, um, you know, a little bit more light on their feet and you don't have to come into a call and just like hound for your message. It's like the beginning of this. We're all like, Hey, everyone's at home. Everyone's got their <laughs> kids. Like what's your day like? I mean, it's very relatable. And so I think people should be, you know, leaning into that because I do believe when folks do answer the phone, which they will, and I think they will continue to increase back to normal. Um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really positive thing that we're all kind of in the same same situation. I do think that email just really quickly is going to go down for the foreseeable future because it feels like all of a sudden there's just so much more email. I don't really understand why. Uh, Mary's nodding, but <laughs> it seems like uh, email is being like saturated. Yeah. And um, I think that may be like a, a weird blip uh, for the next couple months, maybe. Yeah. And another thing people want to know, and this is very specific to remote and, and, you know, some teams might choose to stay remote after this. Like if, if it's working well, it could be like an expense saved and it could fit their culture. But someone has asked my biggest challenge from a management perspective is feeling like I'm providing enough support to my team 
while making sure I'm not over the top or micromanaging? How do you know what the right balance is? Yeah, that, that's a great question. We, I, I'm trying to deal with this personally my, myself. And, and one of the things that I've just been doing with my team is every time we have a check-in, um, I, I'm constantly seeking their feedback um, and, and make sure to make sure that I'm relaying, hey, th this is why I want to engage with you every morning at 8.30 a.m. To, to, to check in. How is that working for you? Are you getting out of it what you need? And even in, in a week, we've tweaked um, uh, the, the, essentially the purpose of our daily standup with my team. We went into it all last week. Everyone shared kind of their priorities for the day is what are you working on? And while we still do some of that, we've actually tweaked to, to make it a little more just about kind of check-in and personal. And everyone still shares something, but it might be, hey, here's what went really well yesterday, or here, here's what I struggled with yesterday. Does anybody have any recommendations? Or here's what I'm really focused on. So, so we, we tweaked our kind of cadence even though our cadence is the same we, we tweaked our goal for our, our daily stand-up to be a little bit more about what they needed and that helped me get I, I think a bigger buy-in from my team so that they knew transparently like hey this is not to micromanage you this is just to to help us continue to be the strong team that we are when we're in the office in this remote environment. And I think yeah. providing them that group setting to collaborate too does a great job of that. It allows for support without it being directly managed by you, you know? For sure. I really, I really like the, the, the piece that you guys are doing of like what went well for me or maybe what didn't go well and having that get circulated. Um, I know that's something that our managers do in their, their one-on-one -on -one templates through, through ambition. Another thing that I think is really, really key, Mary, is like we're, and you've seen this here, like we're trying to, automate as much of the um, ideally like the recognition side as possible so that like that's a, a milestone check-in that can be automated by the system and so when someone sets a, a, a demo or like when someone sets a meeting or when a, um, a meeting that was set converts into an opportunity you know those are very custom metrics for how we do business but all of those are opportunities to feel like i know what's going on i can have a conversation now it's a you know, it's a point in time that gets, you know, in Slack or a quick call of how that happened. What did you do? That sounds great. Um, instead of the inverse, which is like, you know, that's pushing the data out to us instead of me pulling it in and saying like, you know, Hey, Susan, what are you doing right now? How's your day going? Like, then she's like, whoa, 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 what's happening? Like, why is this guy, you know, thumb on me from wherever I am? Um, and, and I think that's really, you know, delicate thing to try to, have as much of that happen automatically so that when these positive things or maybe negative things happen, both, both parties are on the same page doesn't feel like they're being, you know, under the microscope. Another thing just to mention really quick that I, I'm pretty excited about is kind of out of nowhere, we, we go into this fully remote, fully uh, different world we are in the last couple of weeks. And a thing that we're doing in Ambition that we'll be launching soon, Mary, is, is Ambition Asks. And so allowing folks to um, you know, basically catalog and, and push a question to anyone in the org. And it works a little bit better in Ambition because I think it, it kind of uh, allows managers to have a, a burn down task list versus Slack. Like I'm sure everyone's Slack right now is just every channel is on fire. Um, yes. It's kind of created a task list where it's like, you know, Mary wants to know about this. Tom wants to know about this. Uh, Jerry needs help with this. And uh, it's, it's still baking. We're using it right now internally, but it's really helped in terms of organizing what, what I'm sure folks, you know, like me, it's like, oh my God, where are all these slacks? I'm just trying to get rid of the little notifications so I can get back to work. Um, so more to come there, but, but great question. I think uh, it's a delicate balance between micromanaging versus uh, hopefully managing and coaching. Yeah. I, I think one of the interesting things that, that we didn't hit on there that, that might, kind of help up with that is you mentioned earlier kind of shifting some individual goals more to team goals and I, I love that idea because again like like we've talked about everyone is 
uh, just like every company is dealing with this situation differently, every individual is dealing with this situation differently. Like there there are some individuals who may have a a parent that is really struggling or that they're super worried about. So that's going to affect their, their actual goals. But if, if we can shift to more team based goals and that person can feel like they're contributing without having that micro scope right on top of them while, while they're dealing with the situation differently, it, it can help create kind of that, that more team camaraderie toward that goal as opposed to just that individual micromanagement. That's a great point. And I know we're getting close on time, but I have a couple, just a couple quick things left. Um, Brian, at Lesson Lee, I need to know what three metrics you're looking at right now, like every day, what are your three go-to metrics? Yeah, totally. Uh, from a sales perspective right now, it, it's it's definitely a uh, new meeting set, uh, which is leading to pipeline that, that we are driving. And, and then we're looking really closely at uh, conversion. So while, while uh, like you mentioned earlier, Brian, our, while we know we, we're going to have some deals that push and, and there's some fluctuation in our quarter, uh, a lot of it's still an unknown. We're trying to get a little bit more micro right now in this situation, look at okay, what is, instead of what is our just overall win rate, what is our conversion rate from when we're getting someone in the door to immediately getting them to that next stage where, where we can go deep or getting in them into a demo and those types of things. So trying to get a little bit more micro in this situation so that we can, uh, Brian, you mentioned it earlier, control the controllables where uh, we, we may not be able to know, like, are we going to be able to get this opportunity closed by the end of the quarter? Because there's a lot of, a lot we don't know right now. There's a lot of fluidity in everyone's business, but can we progress those conversations and that, those progressing conversations uh, is, is where we're seeing a lot of focus right now to, to let's just take it day by day. Let's put one foot in front of the other and figure out what we do next. Yep. And then I've asked everybody this so far, so I do want to know this too. What's your like worst working from home embarrassing moment or like snafu that has happened so far oh man snafu um (laughs) probably the the worst is and it's what everyone's going through is you're in the middle of a call and someone uh a kid walks in right i have three kids and uh sometimes they, they don't get which is completely fair they don't get oh hey you hear dad on the on the phone in there maybe i shouldn't go in even though they're they you feel like they should be old enough to know that but uh but i again i think we're all all going through that in in one way or another so i, I wouldn't even call it a snafu i just call it probably the new normal <laughs> yeah well, i wanted to highlight that because uh brian you actually we talked last week and you handled this uh with really gracefully, and I wanted to shout it out because I have an almost five-year-old, and he walked in uh, while we were first talking about doing this, and it's just like he's now hovering. He cannot walk away. <laughs> he's just like, what is happening? How do I get to talk to this guy? And, uh, yeah, you handled it great. I think it's – I love what folks are posting on LinkedIn and Twitter and stuff, like, you know, not saying sorry that my kid walks in. It's just like I appreciate you understanding because this is life right now. So yeah. uh, I appreciate – I appreciate you handling it great last week. And uh, this was awesome, man. Thanks for giving us some time and some, some ideas for how folks can uh, be managing remote and, and these changing times. Absolutely. I, I had a blast. And if I remember correctly, he was really focused on uh, strawberries. He, he really wanted his strawberries. Yeah. I hope you got them for him. <laughs> I did. I did. I, I think I promised him like six things just to get him out. And he just kept coming back. He figured it out. He was like, I can ask for anything. Right. Now. Right. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you guys both so much. Um, can't wait to talk again soon. This has been super helpful. I just appreciate you sharing with everybody. Absolutely. Thanks. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Mary.